I love using ChatGPT to speed up my Blender workflows. Whenever I have a repetitive task, I just ask it to create a Python script for me that automates it, saving me so much time. But for some reason, I never try to see if it can also model or create full scenes. So today, let's see what happens when we make ChatGPT the 3D artist. If you like combining AI tools with traditional ones like Blender, make sure to check out my channel. I have a lot of exciting tutorials about generative animation and AI rendering. Now before we let ChatGPT create full 3D scenes, such as a futuristic sci-fi city and a picturesque lakeside village, we should start with the basics. If you've ever learned Blender, there is a good chance you started with Blender Guru's famous donut tutorial. It's an amazing course that teaches you all the basics you need to know to get started, while giving you the opportunity to put your own stamp on the final design. So people have been modeling donuts for years now and all the steps are well documented. So if ChatGPT can model anything, it should be this, right? So my prompt is, create a tasty looking donut in the 3D software Blender. Create detailed shaders for all the objects and add colorful sprinkles. Add lights and set up a camera. It gave me these detailed step-by-step -step instructions, so next I asked to turn them into a Python script. I can already see that we're on the right track here, because it absolutely nailed the first step of creating a Blender scene, deleting that default cube. I really find these comments that ChatGPT adds to the script really helpful, because that way even if you don't know Python, you always know what's going on. So let's see what it does here. First it deletes all the objects, then it creates a donut, and the donut is just a torus. It then adds a subdivision surface modifier and activates smooth shading. And to create the frosting, it just duplicates the original torus and scales it differently. And that's a really straightforward, simple way to do it. So let's now check if it actually works or if it just looks good in script form. I only need to copy the script, go to the scripting workspace in Blender, click new, paste the script and click this play button. And well, it's something. I think this is a solid first step, but we have this error message. So let's copy it and ask ChatGPT to fix the script. It tried to correct the script, but I had to repeat this process like three times for it to get it right. But finally, I had a donut with two materials. And let's take a quick look at these materials. So the frosting is just a very, very simple principled BSDF. And the donut material itself looks a bit more complicated. Okay. So it, it looks like it wanted to do something more complex here actually, because we have this subsurface scattering that is not connected to anything here. Also interesting that for the top part for the frosting, it used the principled BSDF where you can set like basically everything, also the subsurface. And here it tried to do it individually by creating like a diffuse, glossy, and then mixing these and then adding the subsurface, but not adding it really. I reminded ChatGPT about the colorful sprinkles and recommended to give the frosting some displacement to make it more natural and... <laughs> oh my god, is that minced meat? Ugh. And where are the sprinkles? I mean, the setup looks correct. Okay, they're way too small. <laughs> Why are they yellow? That looks horrendous. Why are they so round and... Ugh. They look like insect eggs or something, or like maggots. So in one final attempt to save the donut, I asked to reduce that displacement strength a little bit and make the colorful sprinkles a lot bigger. It reduced the bump map strength, but instead of colorful, just changed the sprinkle color. Why green? I mean, it's a, it's a, I think it's a bit better, better than maggot colored. Okay, I feel like this is as far as I can push it right now. And you know what? If that is ChatGPT's understanding of a tasty looking donut, that's fine. Finally, I had ChatGPT create three-point lighting and add an animated moving camera. But before I show you that final rendering, let's see what happens when we give it full creative freedom. I was thrilled when I saw that ChatGPT had chosen a sci-fi theme, so expecting to see a futuristic city, a spaceship or an alien planet, I copied over the script and it's a glowing cube. It's not just any cube, that's a sci-fi cube. Well done, but unfortunately the scene is incredibly boring. Create a sci-fi city with the complex materials and make it detailed and exciting. It was at this point that it hit me. 
Had AI just turned me into the annoying director who has no idea what he wants and is unable to communicate? Hey man, just got the shot and I, I love it. It's cool, but it's not quite there yet. Just add more detail, make it more exciting, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, cool, thank you. Oh, we don't have more budget. <laughs> but to my surprise, ChatGPT actually turned my vague prompt into something really promising. A basic layout for a city with different materials. Next I asked to create more complex materials for the skyscrapers and the city felt a bit empty, so I made it have roads and cars. Oh no, a car crash. I wonder if these random planes here are supposed to be the streets? Like if, if they were scaled like this? But take a look at this. I think this is really interesting. Like the way it created the shaders for the skyscrapers. It created a brick texture and you can see from the top you can see that brick texture, but because of the way it's projected onto the objects, from the side it just stretches these individual bricks out to create this really futuristic looking facade. That's a really creative approach and it looks okay. <laughs> Next I had to turn the scene into a night scene with atmosphere, neon lights and antennas on the buildings. And iteration after iteration I was able to shape the scene into something that I liked. Did it feel kind of tedious to feed ChatGPT all these instructions, especially when I could have done it 10 times faster and better? Absolutely. But I was honestly very surprised that it worked so well at all. Imagine a future version of ChatGPT being trained on thousands of complex Blender scenes with procedural shaders and geometry node setups. It could become like a 3D co-pilot, helping you to set up particle simulations, geometry node setups, layout geometry or whatever you want. As a final test I wanted to see what happens when we give it a super complex prompt and to no one's surprise it didn't work. So I went back to the iterative workflow. I started with a prompt for a forest lake scene and gradually I was able to add trees shaders and even a cozy village by the lake with a church. Adding that village actually worked first try, which actually surprised me. Okay, so let's now look at the final renderings. I took over the animation of the camera for this one because ChatGPT often forgets early aspects of the scene when the script gets too complex. The context length of ChatGPT's answers is just not long enough at the moment to create like incredible complex scenes. But for this one, for the donut, I actually managed to have it create the camera and everything. So the full scene is done by ChatGPT. And yeah sure, the models are far from impressive and look like very early 3D video games, but I think it's impressive that ChatGPT even has this understanding. And in combination with other AI tools, for example my 3D rendering workflow, we could already turn these rough geometries into pretty interesting scenes. So what do you think? What will the future of 3D look like? Will we all become directors just writing prompts? Will we have an AI co-pilot who we can ask to add stuff to our scenes? And would you even want something like this or do you prefer creating everything by hand to have full control over the full process? Let me know in the comments. Thank you to my lovely Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. If you want access to exclusive workflows and our community discord, check it out under the link in the description. See you next time.